Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna watch What Happens Next Will Shock You by The Daily Reminder. Guys, needless to say, with this type of title, I have absolutely no idea what the video is about other than supposedly it will shock us. So with no further ado, let's have a look. 1 final statement of the prophet and it teaches us about learning from those who came before us he says kana fi man kana qablakum there was in the generation before our generation meaning in our cousins of faith the jews and the christians mm. those who preceded us in faith there was a righteous man he was a well known man he lived amongst people and he had a difficulty in his life he had a tragedy and a struggle that he could not cure for himself each and every one of us we have that one thing I, you know, you could be rich, you could be this, 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 but you can't cure your health. Or it could sure. be you have amazing health, you have it, but I don't have any money. Or Absolutely. You, whatever, it could not. It could be that you love someone that you can't help them. So this man, he had this yep. one thing. It's very hard to have them all. Thing. Although he had all the wealth and all the respect, everything was good in his life, but there was that one thing he can't change for himself. So this man said what I'm inviting you today to, and this man said, because I can't change my condition and the only one that can change my condition is Allah I can't help myself I'm in, in that weakness where I have no power or authority over it so the only okay. way that I can help myself is I'm going to help someone else so he decides nice. at night in the middle of the night on a dark moonless night I'm going to go out to a different part of the city because I want it to be sincere and I don't want anyone to glorify me or to feel that that, that good deed was done for the benefit of someone praising me for it. So in, I'm going to go to a different part of the city and I'm going to change the kind of clothing that people recognize me by. And in the middle of the dark, the it's first very person noble. I touch, al Temis, because it's dark, there's no street lights back then. The first person I bump into, I'm going to give them charity. And then I'm going to run away so that they don't ask me who you are, where you're from. Amazing. So he goes out in the middle of the night, not even his wife knows, no one knows. And the first person he touches, he says, Here, take some charity and runs off. He wakes up in the morning and the whole city is buzzing. And they're laughing, they're amused. And he goes, what, what, you know, What's happening? What's, what's, on, what, what's in the news today? And they said, Someone yesterday gave charity to a mugger. Whoa. Like there was a guy there in the dark who was just about to rob this fool. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, he's just about to rob him. And just as he's about to say your money or your life, he goes, here's some charity, brother. He runs away. <laughs> and everyone found that amusing. He's like. It is amusing. So this man whose heart is alive with consciousness, with, you know, thinking about God, he said, I wanted to give charity like someone that was needy. I don't want to give a robber like, you know, <laughs> mugger. I don't think God is going to accept that. Okay, I'm going to go out again tonight. So the next night, he does the same thing. He says that he doesn't believe that God would accept it, but we cannot possibly know because he gave money to the mugger. Maybe with that, he saved another man's life. Thing, the first person he touches, gives charity, runs. Next morning, everyone's like hysterical now. Laughing again. He goes, what happened? They said, May Allah protect us, Ya Rabb, our families and our homes. Someone gave charity to a woman of the night. So, he, hmm. you know, he just gave it and ran. He said, That's, you know, I was hoping like I might meet someone with like an orphan. Or yeah, but yet again, with giving money to a woman of the night, to a prostitute, he could have potentially saved her from all kinds of inconveniences. We do not know why that woman is in the position of being a prostitute, why she has to sell her body. We don't know who her next customer would have been. So possibly, yet again, he saved her. Oh, I'm going to go a third night. So the third <laughs> night he goes out and he gives him and runs off. And this time the whole city is like laughing. 
تصدق البارحة على غنينا. Someone stopped the wealthiest man of our city and gave him charity. Like he stopped the Lord Mayor and said, "Here's you know here's here's a couple of bucks, right?" And then every the Sahaba when they heard the Prophet retelling this story, they were laughing, and he said, "Atadhakun, you laugh from this." أما الأولى as for that first night. أخذ السارق الصدقة واكتفى ولم يأذي أحد. The thief who took that charity that night, he said, "This is enough for me. I don't need to hurt anyone tonight." Exactly. See. Now see that charity that that man underestimated. See, we underestimate our good all the time. See, sometimes you see someone sitting at the corner of a road, and you say, "Oh, if I give him like two pound, he's going to drink it." Sure. Yeah, but. Perhaps if you give it to him, he won't stop other people. And perhaps if you give him something uh, that is enough for him, it might shelter him. And you might say, "Well, I don't have to stay late longer or later on the street. I'm just going to go to the shelter." Perhaps your one charity may prevent harm to others who you never even thought about that Absolutely. will come in later in that road. And that man who took that mugger, who took that money, he said, "I don't need to. Hurt. I don't need to be out here." And he went back and you know spoke at their pub or wherever, and he hang out and he said, "Hey, this is you know, can you believe this happened?" And everyone's laughing at that fool who gave him charity. But that act of generosity did not just stop there; it extended to everyone else who might have been harmed. Exactly, people could have died. And then the prophet said, "As for the second night, that woman who none of see sometimes we're so judgmental. See, sometimes we look at a person, you might say." Why would anyone do that to themselves? Or, you know. Yeah, people don't take into consideration that you would do exactly the same if you would be that person. If you would have been born in the same household, the same mother, the same father, and you have the same genetics, so you come out as the same person that you see in front of you. You would have been the same person. This might sound deterministic, but the point of the story is that we are all dealt a certain card deck, and people with the exact same genetics and with the exact same upbringing would then do the exact same things. It is what it is. And moreover, we simply cannot know the fullness of God's plan. So how can we judge? We should never judge other people. We don't know why they are in that position. And I always say to myself, man, I could have been in that. Position as well, so thank God I am not. You know that's disease and home wrecker, and you know why would any woman you know sell herself like that? See, you what 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 your short sightedness is that your assumption is that God's favor is more for you than her. Exactly and true. It's not entirely true. No, we don't know. It's not true. And that woman, the prophet said, she took that money. وعفت نفسها and she said I don't need to dishonor myself and I'm going to go home and he protected her and he protected those exactly. who were going to come for her from that sin right fitna correct for us as muslims we have I no believe. judgment towards other people judgment is only with allah see perhaps Beautiful. that young lady who you see with that contemptuous eye contemptful eye If she had been given the life you would given, she would be much better than you are today. This man, exactly right. Sometimes we look and say, you know, I'm better. I didn't even know that judgment is for God alone and that Muslims believe they cannot judge because yet again, I have to repeat the same old tiresome story. Sorry, guys. But growing up in Germany, I met so many judgmental Muslims around me. They were consistently judging, especially judging women. And therefore, I didn't even know that Muslims are not allowed to judge. This is absolutely coherent with my... My world view. Judgment is to God alone. We don't have that foresight. We don't even understand the whole picture. So how can we judge? I would never do that. Yeah, but you didn't experience maybe what she experienced. That exactly. Led her to what she's doing. Exactly. And had you been in those circumstances, you might have been worse than what she's in. Sure, or sure. He's in. Or exactly the same. And that's the lesson from the Prophet Isa. Beautiful. The third night, that king, that rich man. Who has more than the one who is being charitable to him? Mm -hmm. He took that money and felt shame mm -hmm. that people who are less than me are doing more than me. And the Prophet said, on the fourth night, the king was the one who went out, hiding his persona and <laughs> giving charity to others. And then the Prophet says, what we might have heard before: لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا. 
Never look down at any good deed you do in life. Never look down at that one pound you give to that person on the side of the street. Never look down at a kind word you say to someone. Never look down at a smile you give to someone who you don't know really well, but that smile cheers them up that they say, wow, you know, I kind of feel that was nice. No one, no one cared about me to ask to, to lift my bag or to yes. hold that elevator. Don't ever look down at any good deed. All right, and this is it for today's video. The video claimed that it will shock us. It didn't shock me at all. It was the opposite. It was absolutely beautiful. It amazed me. It might have surprised me as well. I didn't expect this video to be about Prophet Muhammad, but it definitely didn't shock me. It displayed yet again the beautiful character of Prophet Muhammad. The more I learn about Prophet Muhammad, the less I think about the brainwashing that I basically put myself through by listening to all of those anti-Islamists by listening to David Wood, AP and the rest. They painted such a dirty and disgusting picture, but the more I learned about Islam and Prophet Muhammad myself, the more admiration I have for this man. Absolutely beautiful. One more thing, guys, especially at the end of the video, when they mentioned a smile, I can completely relate to that. And I mentioned this in previous videos as well. Since I moved to Thailand, away from Europe, Thailand is called the land of thousand smiles and is so true when you walk through the streets people smile at you you smile back absolute strangers that you've never met before in your life in europe most of the time you get some evil looks you get some angry guys but here in thailand the atmosphere is so peaceful so cheerful and it elevates everybody around you so i really urge everybody to smile at each other it makes your day it truly does it amplifies the joy of life a thousandfold anyways guys this is it for today's video if you liked it leave it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel via patreon for example all the links are in the description box below thank you very much as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.